All right, guys, well, we're weeks away from the draft. And, boy, there's going to be a lot of draft talk this year with nothing else going on. Likely the most interesting debate of the draft this year focuses on two quarterbacks, LSU's Joe Burrow and Alabama's Tua Tagovailoa. Burrow is fresh off his all-everything season, winning a dump truck full of awards and scorching every team LSU faced en route to their perfect season in the national championship. But Tua was winning national championships and tearing up SEC defenses when Joe Burrow was still jumping around the transfer portal. And many had Tua atop their board before his hip injury this year. Burrow remains a consensus number one, but Tua is heading is healing and getting stronger every day. So, Drink, is Joe Burrow locked in as the top pick, or should the Bengals look at Tua instead? Well, when I think of that question, I think of that question in two different ways. The first part of the question, is Joe Burrow locked in as a top pick? I think at this point he is locked in as a top pick. The one thing that they, they say that you cannot bounce back from when you're a prospect jumping to the next level, being from college to pros, is injuries. You can go out there and beat your wife. You can go out there and commit murder. You can go out here. You can do a whole lot of things to, to get to the NFL. But if you get hurt, oh, look, wait, oh, oh, hey, stop the presses, stop the presses. Because one, the best ability is availability. And we ain't got time for you to be coming in here all gimpy. We need to make some money. So if you pull an Aaron Hernandez, that's your problem. I don't care about that. Hey, you're innocent to proven guilty. Come on out here and catch some passes for us. But, you know, if you hurt, you can't get the job done, especially as a quarterback. Let's be real. The bar for a quarterback is a lot more different, a lot more higher than any other player that plays on that field. I'm sorry. A quarterback is what you call a leadership position, right? You got the owner, the GM, the head coach, and then the quarterback. That's how the chain of command usually go on most teams. Now, you got to select few, and that's why those select few are down at the dumps. Now, the second part of that question, when we talk about should the, ba- should the Bengals take to it instead, if you're asking me, and I'm the GM, yes, I definitely think they should take to it. I have a problem with one-hit wonders. That's my thing. I have a problem with one-hit wonders. And especially when you're comparing them to guys that have been showing this with longevity. Yes, I understand that Tua has, you know, he, he has had this hip injury that's similar to what Bo Jackson had. But one day Bo Jackson was up running the football, the next day his career was over. I got that. Fair significant injury. But in today's technology, in, 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 the, in the world of medicine now, they have figured out a way for him to bounce back from said injury and perform at, if not better, than he was performing before he got hurt. Now, coronavirus has made this hard for most GMs. I got it. I can't blame a GM if you, if I'm not allowed to watch you work out, if I'm not allowed to actually evaluate you with my own eyes as a scout, if I'm not allowed to talk to you about the process. It's hard for me to be like, you know what? I'm just going to have to take that YouTube video I seen for his face value, and we're going to roll the dice because he looked real good in them drills. And then when that other guy walked in and say, so did Ben Simmons. Now you're like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, you got a point on that one. So I don't, I, I, you know, I'm not mad at a GM or I don't, you know, you look down on a GM if they're having that type of problem. But if you're going to tell me, oh, well, Joe Burrow was just a better quarterback prospect. Why? Because of one year? You better ro- roll that beautiful bean footage. You better go look at what Tua was doing as a true freshman coming in now putting the team on his back won a national championship you better go look what he did in his second year yes he got hurt but when he came back he got it done his injuries is the only reason like i I was talking to jay about this if the cincinnati Bengals gm or the owner they came out held a press conference and was like all right listen we're gonna cut out all the chatter we're gonna get straight to the point we're gonna take joe burrow over to because Listen, Tua stay hurt too much. We ain't got time for the injuries. I would be perfectly fine with that. I would not be mad at the Cincinnati Bengals for coming out, giving us the raw, uncut, we ain't got time for it. You know why? Because I'm smart enough to know, I've been watching this game long enough to know, that injuries play a big part. It plays a bigger part than most players' character do. Like, you cannot have an injury history, a long one at that. And you definitely cannot be a quarterback. But as a prospect, 
Don't nobody put it on the money like tour. I mean, the product speaks for itself. He should have won the Heisman, uh, not last year, but two years ago. But he got that took from under by Kyler Murray. Yeah, this guy has shown he's been in college for three years. This this is what I would tell people: you take all Joe Burrow because he played at two colleges. Take his co- collegiate stats, roll them puppies up, and roll them out. And then take two of collegiate stats, roll them puppies up, and roll them out. And I'm gonna tell you this: don't give him no bull crap about where he played at Alabama. Oh, he got athletes everywhere. Because LSU ain't got no athletes, right? Ohio State ain't got no athletes, right? Come on. That that, that excuse is, is that's worn out. I don't want to hear that bull crap. Oh, by the way, he was at Ohio State, and he couldn't beat out Dwayne Haskins. Huh. So he couldn't beat out Dwayne Haskins, the same Dwayne Haskins that went, went in the first round last year, and we still trying to figure out what's going on with him now. You know, the Washington kind of flailing him around. But all of a sudden, you're going to tell me this dude is the best thing since sliced bread? I think we underselling Joe Brady on this one. I really do. I think we underselling Joe Brady a lot. I think we're going to find out a lot about him. But, however, if you want to take him because he's injury-free, no problem. That's one thing Joe Burrow got the check in the box over to him, hands down. He did not sniff. He did not. Um, occur a significant injury this year, and he didn't do it last year. He just was so bad, nobody cared last year. Because, you know, they, they lost to a team by the name of Troy. But, you know, ain't nobody talking about that. But, you know, <laughs> little small school, you know. My city bigger than that school. But it, either way, they lost to that team with him at the helm. Nobody talking about that. And, and now you want to sell to me that this guy is just so above, beyond, he's a lock-in. I don't think he a lock-in. I really don't think he a lock-in. But if I'm Cincinnati and I'm playing it safe, it's like playing the stock market. Do I want to take the risk or do I want to take the the safe stock? The safe stock is Joe Burrow. But if I get a little risky, I want to put a little razzle-dazzle in my life, then I can go with Tua and I might make more money when this hit. Rather than going with the, the safe, plain, rice with no seasoning stock over here, Joe Burrow. So you tell me. But I, my answer to that is um, I think Joe Burrow will be a lot because of his, uh, his uh, injury history. But I think Tua should be the number one overall draft pick this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly with you on this one. The, uh, the, 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 you, you know this as well as I do. The Bengals are going to take – they're going to take Joe Burrow for a multitude of reasons. One of them, he's an Ohio kid. Yeah. Uh, two, th- there's a little bit of recency bias here. You're the recent yeah. Heisman Trophy winner. You're the recent national champion. You just had a, you know, the 60 touchdowns, six interceptions. You know, just, just a, just a wonderful fairy tale ride. It's almost shed a tear watching them, you know, Ed Orgeron chewing up rocks and everything. It's a beautiful thing. But hey, listen, th- I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Cincinnati here for just a quick minute, because Cincinnati, think about them through the years. This is a team that's never won a Super Bowl championship. This is a team that stuck with Marvin Lewis for what? I don't know, 15, 16 years. And just they they couldn't bear to let him go because, you know, they just, for whatever reason. Cincinnati's ownership and GM, if they got one, Zach Taylor, they don't don't have the guts to take Tua. They're they're a safe organization. They're traditionally cheap and free agency, although they're spending money like it's going out of style here lately on the likes of – DJ Reader, open up a book and read it, and Trey Waynes, all these guys, and we're just wondering what's going on here. And you got people, uh, you know, in the media saying, "Oh yeah, Cincinnati out here making moves." Are they really? I, I, I don't see it. You gonna have to show me something. I mean, I don't, and I don't think, I don't think Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and Clyde Edwards Alaire and all these boys, not to mention Joe Brady, they're not coming with him. And you can say the th- same thing about Tua, who has – he's had a remarkable supporting cast in his own right. That That's the nature of playing at Alabama and LSU. But your, your point is spot on about – and I'm the same way. I like seeing multiple seasons of excellence. Outside of last – this this is one season that we've seen Joe Burrow be outstanding. Tua's been outstanding outside of injury. When he is on the field, he is outstanding. From the very first moment he set foot on the field and 
you know, outside of mop up duty for Jalen Hurts in that season. But when the lights, when the lights were brightest, when his team was in a hole, when Nick came in at halftime and said, "Hey, Tua, go in there and help us out." Tua led him back in the national championship game as a true freshman. That that happened, and then in his subsequent seasons, 2018, 2019. 76 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Just remarkable. Unlike anything Alabama has ever seen at the quarterback position. To, to the degree that Alabama, and I don't know if this was in the subconscious, but it seems like they were so comfortable and in awe of Tua throwing the football that they got away from how the other things they've been great at for years, playing defense and running the, and running the football to some extent. Which got them in, tr- which got them in a little bit of trouble the past couple of years. When but they were running the football. The d- defense was just right. They, yeah. they took they took a couple of seasons off. But, but, it, but running the football, yeah. yeah you ne- hey, neither here nor there, like you like to say. But listen, Cincinnati doesn't have the guts to make this choice because Tua comes with some risk, and they are a safe organization. That's why they don't win anything. It, it's just the truth. I mean, let, let me ask you this: Joel Embiid. And to caveat what you said about Ben Simmons, we'll bring his boy into the fray, Joel Embiid. He carries some inherent risk coming into the NBA. He was a t- he was a top overall talent, slipped to the third pick because of injuries. But we yeah. we see him today, and he, th- there's still injury risk with Joel Embiid. But I, I've been on the record saying, I'll say it again, this is a top five NBA talent. That that's just one of the things that you have to look at. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I think an um, even closer one would be Steph Curry. That same thing happened with okay. Steph Curry. That's yeah. why a lot of teams passed him up because his ankle injury, and now That's he's right. the best shooter in NBA history. That's right, and MVPs and championships and all that. And and I'm going to say this. If to, if if you don't have the – listen, it, to, to is still a top, uh, top draft prospect. I mean, it's not like these injuries – or have him like you know down late second round or something like this. Mock, most mock drafts have him going to the Dolphins at the fifth overall pick. And oh by the way, recently there's been speculation that the Redskins would take him right after the Bengals take Joe Burrow. So if he's in the conversation up that high, I mean that he should be in a conversation for the first overall pick. I mean it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And the, let me let's be honest. The only reason the Redskins aren't taking him, which I you can you can tell me different if you believe so. The Redskins aren't going to take him because they just took at, t- took Haskins, and they're not going to move off him that quickly. But again, if there is even chatter that Tua's could be taken second overall, there should be chatter that he could be taken first overall. But Cincinnati doesn't have the guts to do it. Yeah, I'm going to be a little disappointing here because I I've got to lean just a hair towards Burrow, guys. Man, y'all 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 make really. I mean, you're making great points, really are. I just, my biggest thing with Joe Burrow, I cannot, with what I saw and how many LSU games I watched, I cannot convince myself that was just a one-hit wonder, lightning in a bottle. The the body of work he put together this season is is incredible. I mean, this wasn't just, oh yeah, Joe had a couple nice games and they won, they all, but, you know, as a collective like group, these guys wound up winning. No, like, Joe Burrow was just throwing... <clears throat> What would you, you call it, drink throwing throwing pineapples? Just oh, yeah, pineapple after pineapple, 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 just over yeah, and over. Yeah. Like, yeah, they beat yeah. number seven, number nine, number seven, number two, number four, number four, number three. Like, that, Which and, is, and like, the, hold, it's amazing. Hold on. You know? did, but here, here's my problem with that. Okay, give me that now, but give me what, give me that, that significant team he beat in 2018. Well, he didn't. Like. I'm gonna lie to you. That is that. So that is the definition of one hit wonder. If you cannot give me the team he beat in 18 or 17. Oh, by the way, he was a fifth year senior, so we can go even farther than that if I want to. But like, you give you give me one season. Give give me something outside of that one season, and I'll knock it off. Right, and, and that's fine. You know, I I just personally when I when I watched him play this past season, man. You, you just see everything that the modern NFL they want. You know, you got the big body. You've got just enough speed to get out of trouble sometimes, but you're not a guy that's going to be running all the time. But we, his escape, he had some escape artists, Houdini crap. I agree. Know, a couple games. I agree. Uh, and then, you know, I remember there was specifically a play against Georgia where he escaped the pocket, did some Johnny Manziel looking crap, ran around, and then threw off his back foot a just a perfect pass. I mean, he dropped it right in. 
Um, and just the fact that that body of work, he was always playing really, I mean, not every week, but there was more than half that schedule was very high quality teams. He just, every time, no matter how bright those lights got, man, he was just there, calm, cool, just did what he had to do. I would say in terms of pure technical football, I think Tua probably throws a bit better ball than he does. I, I think Tua could probably make a few throws that Burrow might not be able to put dead in the center every time. But I, I think the biggest thing is, like you said, the injuries, but then you compound that with this draft not being able to fully evaluate a player. I think you're absolutely right that Cincinnati is going to take Burrow, but I, I wouldn't I, be disappointed with either quarterback. I mean, let's, let's, let's keep it on that. I mean, I would absolutely be ecstatic with either guy if I was Cincinnati. But I think for me, just what Burrow did when the lights were brightest and when he was playing the competition he did, I would have to lean towards him over over to a barely i mean just barely and and let me remind people of this because this is what i hear a lot yo joe burrow took he took lsu down there in the place they ain't beat alabama in eight years and he took it to him well i wouldn't say that i mean he, he did play well he did his thing against the defense but two also did his thing with one ankle so at the end of the day, you can sit here and hit me with the injury bug, but Tua played through an injury real quick. Ask that's Oklahoma. A, that's a great point. Ask Oklahoma. He he put it on him with one ankle. He put it on LSU with one ankle. You I mean, you you get away from that the interception and that phantom fumble, which we still trying to figure out what happened, you know, unsolved mystery. And um he st- he had a, a well of a game if you if you look that up. So it's very rarely have you seen a game outside of, I would say, the SEC championship game versus Georgia. That was the one game I thought to myself, this is a bad game from Tua. Because even in the national championship game, he the offense was driving. They just couldn't finish it for whatever reason. They couldn't punch it in. But Tua, was, he was playing. It was what it was. But it, I, I just, I'm tired of people hitting me with the, the, oh, yeah, this season, oh, record-breaking. Mr. Biscuit had a good season. Tell me how that turned out. It's, it's just so many guys that hit the one-hit wonder. Dwayne Haskins is another one. One-hit wonder. Tell me how Washington feel about that. They thinking about coming to get to it. So it's something to be said when you play high-level football for more than one year. And I think people are overlooking that because they're scared of his hip. Yeah, and, and, and just to in, – in Cody's defense – when you talk about the one-hit wonder point, th- th- there's two sides to that. Number mm-hmm. one, and I and I agree with you on the point that I, w- I want to see more. I want to see consecutive seasons where you repeat your level of play. But if there was ever a time to fall back on a one-hit wonder, it is this one. Because we ain't never seen nothing like this. This is smash hit, top of the charts, forget about it, 60 to 6. I mean, you can't be mad at them if they take them. 